Hello everyone and welcome to Murphy's Law Garage. Thank you very much for coming visit us for the first part of what's most likely going to be a few videos for the explanation of how the diesel Bronco was built. Now unfortunately we didn't do the YouTube thing whenever the Bronco was first built, you know, turned into the 7.3 Power Stroke diesel monster it is now. So what I'm going to do is, what you see in front of you here, is a uh, photo album on my personal Facebook that I've made public and I'm going to put a link down in the description below where y'all can go take a look at it for yourselves and I'm going to go through and explain what's going on in every one of these photos in hopes to help people with questions uh, to see what exactly was done to the truck and what it might take to do the same thing to theirs so let's go ahead and get started here something I want y'all to see here is that the Bronco was a very different looking truck. Let's jump into uh, this picture right here. So here you can see that the Bronco was once covered in this very cheap Walmart camouflage paint job. You can see the 5.0, the old slap worn out 5.0 with low compression hanging out here and just the nightmare that is the factory Ford wiring harness situation going on underneath the hood. Something we worked very hard on later to make a lot better than it is now. Now in this photo if we back up on here you can actually see when David and I got the motor pulled out of the engine bay the whole front clip is pulled off. We'll jump to forward. You can see here that the motor is sitting on the floor, that old tired worn out thing. You can see the old transmission sitting right here. These are the wheels that you can even see in later pictures when the diesel is in the truck. We were driving around on these 33s until the 40s were put on. Here you can see David and then Seth. No mullet. <laughs> Yes, the sexy mullet man didn't always have the mullet. And you can see the shop truck hanging out right here. You can see that paint job a little better. Uh, David is degreasing the uh, Bronco's engine bay so that we can pressure wash it out. And, of course, here's David doing some pressure washing. Once the truck was pressure washed, you can see here that the fenders have been pulled off. And we've uh, got a lot of the, the junk out of the engine bay cleared out. As much as we, we did initially take out, this is as much as it is, except for the cowl. This cowl came off at some point. Now, something a lot of people don't know. Oh, here's Seth again. No mullet. <laughs> Look at how short and neat his hair is. Uh, Seth is scraping and brushing things because we're preparing to paint this. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is that we did not originally intend to put a 5.0 V8 into this truck. Uh, I'm sorry, we didn't originally tend to put the 7.3 power stroke in the truck. We were actually going to put another 5.0 into it, an HO motor that came out of a SN95 Mustang GT that had a cam and was fully rebuilt with just a few miles on it. You know, real, real nice, solid 350 ish horsepower motor. What was originally intended to go back in here, and you'll see in this where we eventually moved on to something else. Now you can see here that uh, we've started spraying the firewall with high temp uh, satin black paint here. We've got a drill down here that we were using with a uh, circular brush to brush things down. Oh, well this one is completely out of line. This is the picture after the engine came out and the front clip was off before we uh, pulled the fenders. Right here is the old 5.0 sitting down on the floor. You can see how dirty and nasty this thing was. And this truck was absolutely covered in red dirt uh, just because of where it came from. It was a, uh, a camp truck out of uh, Mississippi area. Here's me standing in the engine pay again. Oh, some more pressure washing. Now these are about as in line as we can get here. I had moved some of these to the Murphy's Law Garage page, but they have no descriptions and they're even more out of line than this. This is actually me right here. Okay, here's the fenders after they were pulled off. They were cleaned up and then we painted the insides of them satin black. You can see that the Bronco here is still in camouflage. Here's another picture, some more 
black painting has been done here. Uh, looks like mostly inside the door jams is what this is focusing on. Oh, now, this is a, a telltale sign of what was actually supposed to be done with the truck rather than the power stroke. This is the AOD transmission that was behind the 5.0 and we actually sent this off to a guy, Michael Frazier. Uh, he does performance transmissions out in Mississippi and he built this transmission for the truck to keep the 5.0 V8. Here's the stall torque converter. I don't remember what the spec was on this. This might have been a 2000 stall converter but this was a, a hot converter to go along with it. Here I am sitting in the engine bay after you know it looks like we're probably 85 90 percent of the way there to everything being painted. You can see here some details I've even painted these plugs red because they were very dirty and I couldn't get them clean and I'm OCD like that. Here's David making funny faces sitting here uh, on the truck as well. Oh, look, you can see his container of Pour 15 that we use to coat the frame. Ah, now this is going to begin to start looking more familiar to y'all. So we had begun to sand the body in hopes of getting the camouflage paint off and seeing what was underneath it only for the sandpaper to cruise straight through the base clear coat and base coat that was under there so the, there wasn't much of the paint left whenever they put camo on it. You can see here that the painting in the engine bay is now uh, looks to be you know 95 nearly 100 percent. A little bit of red poking out here and there. More sanding going on right here. Yeah tailgate situation. Now you'll notice in later pictures that this tailgate, <coughs> excuse me, this tailgate is uh, no longer red at all. In fact it looks fully black primered and that's because there's a really really nasty set of dents right here and right here in the tailgate I believe and I believe there might have even been some rust in it and it just wasn't worth the time to try to fix it. Here's David and I standing in front of the truck. What a great outfit for working on a truck, eh? You like the flip-flops and the very dirty white shorts? I bet you I threw those away right after this. You can see that it's still in that same state of paint and sand. And we've got the old worn out 5.0 here. Ah, now here we go. Now this picture kind of proceeds with the, the beauty shot here. This is the 1996 F-250 that acted as the donor for our swap. Um, so fun story how I actually ended up with this truck. Uh, I had a 1991 Eclipse GS for sale that I had bought as a flipper. Uh, what a blown up motor. Replaced the motor, got it all cleaned up and beautiful, got the AC working and put it up for sale for two grand. And the fellow that had this truck put this one up for trade for a running vehicle so he could get back and forth to work. And I messaged him and said, hey, would you be interested in a, a 1990 Eclipse? And he said, yeah, certainly. And he explained to me why this truck was so cheap. And basically what it ended up being is that the timing cover right here, there's an oil cooler on the bottom side of the motor right here. And it was leaking oil really bad. So he went to change the O-rings on the oil cooler, which are known to be extremely difficult to get to and do. And he pried on the timing cover to put the, the cooler back in with the new O-rings and snapped the ear off of the timing cover and bailed on the whole project. And that's how we got a 1996 F-250 with a good running 7.3 for a trade value of $1,900. Here's David looking very excited about life. You can see a lot more sanding has been done here. The shop is even dusty. He's up here with the orbital sander, uh, the palm sander, and he's working on the roof trying to, to get the paint ate down. Right here, what I, the whole reason I took this picture is I was washing the panels to see the heavy dust here. I was washing the panels to try to get some of the heavy dust off so that I could better see to repair dings in the panel like this and when I wet it it looked beautiful to me like I actually personally love this patina 
and if it were my truck and not David's, I would have put a, a semi-gloss or a wax over this patinaed looking paint that we sanded to and left it just the way it was, and that's how it was posted on Facebook. Actually, you see her here, what do y'all think? <laughs> Should we stop here, sat and clear the paint on the door, or leave it just as is? There you go. Um, so right here, I began doing some body work. There was a really nasty crack. Does it show? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, yep, here you go. Here's some of it. You can see that the panel has started to separate here. You can see some of the cracking there. We have no idea how this split happened there. There's no depreciation in the metal here, so I'm not quite sure how that split open happened. But you can see that I uh, very carefully and lightly stitched this shut. The metal is very thin and, and heavily worked from the years. This crack right here, I stitched it back shut, and eventually I came back and used a hammer and dolly and actually worked this metal here until it laid flat for me. Um, that way it wouldn't have such a rise in it. Sorry, grabbing some water real quick. All right, so here you can see I've actually gone back and uh, ground these in smooth and done a little bit of that hammering work to try to uh, bring this shape back to where it's supposed to be. Uh, this one was nasty. This, this actually, this is at the very crown. Look, this is the drip rail above the passenger side door. This is where the camper top would be. This is a combination of rot and just poor metal design and, and structural bracing in the truck. This, this happens, it's pretty common on others. So you've got a crack running down right here and there's some body filler, a uh, seam sealer that's put into this drip rail. This is a combination of rust and separation and I think I might have even begun to have uh, started repairing this but I came back in here there you go and actually this took forever because some of this metal was a lot thinner than it looked especially in this area it was just tack on top of tack on top of tack on top of tack and it was the way it's built into the truck this is double layer panel so you, it's not like I could just put metal behind it and seal it shut and I really didn't want to cut anything out because it was just a crack so this was the results for that. <clears throat> you can see here I've ground it down real nice and pretty. And uh, up here this is looking all nice and sharp. I've actually I've got a body filler on it at this stage. You can see I've got body filler on the ding on the door right here. And I've uh, got body filler where a ding was here and I've got body filler down here as well. Well, this I was never able to hammer back perfectly smooth and I was afraid it would start getting wavy on me. So this received a nice healthy dose of, uh, of body filler. What uh, David is doing in here is there's a trim that runs along the inside of this body that uh, it has a bunch of screws in it and uh, most of them just snapped off ready to drill them out. So, and here's actually, look, here's the trim. What he's doing right here is he's uh, grinding away the screws that were once holding that trim down. You can see here that I've come back and I've sanded on the body filler, so there's actually very little left here of what had originally been applied. Same here, you can see I've sanded in the body filler, and uh, it's a very thin application like you'd want to see it. This is a, a dent that I, I very barely found at the last second while working on this side of the truck by the tail light. Where are we here? This is the door, yeah. This is an interesting dent that ended up sanding out like this on the door. And this is right below the keyhole. And here you go. Here's the work where this was this was all tortured. I had something to do. This is where the the steel kind of opened up like an envelope right here and then I had that stitch weld right here if you remember fixing a crack I ended up with a lot of bondo across this panel like I said because even after a bunch of hammering it just felt like it was getting wavier and wavier so I decided to leave it alone and fill it but you can see just how much it took this actually isn't near as thick as it looks it's starting to burn back through to the primer right here but this section right here ended up being very thick because of depression. I'd really be curious as to what caused the uh, the damage here. Ah, oh, okay. So 
what you see here is there's a uh, a sound deadening material that was, or a glue or something that was holding uh, sound deadening down onto the floor that needed to come up and David has gotten in here with just a horrendous task I'm glad he did it not me uh, he has this uh, cup disc that he had on here that he was using to eat a lot of this material back up off the floor for us and you can see he's done that all through here where it was all stuck up on the inside of the bed Ah, more metal damage. This is one of the seat studs that hold the driver's side seat in. There's lots of fatiguing and cracking here. Interestingly enough, I have this same damage on my truck, uh, the Ram Charger, and it's something I'm also going to have to fix. A little difficult to see here. This picture probably wasn't at the best angle. This piece of steel right here that you can see this is the driver's side door hole by the way this picture really could use to be rotated this is a patch panel that was put in here by someone else I'm imagining because either the floor rot it through or if you look right here there's another seat bolt I'm betting that this was cracking really bad and this steel is actually laid on top of this steel you can see it comes down here too and this was obviously cut out of another Bronco because everything lines up like it's supposed to as far as the seam so on and so forth and then the work that I was doing was over here and right here. Let's see, you can see some more of this uh, this previous repair. Look, I forgot about this section. This is also something done by the previous owner. You can see right here I cut out a hole where there was rust. And then also you can see the previous cracked piece here where I've cut it out. And this is actually a piece out of the tailgate of the F-250 that I used to remake this. And then here's some more cracks that I went ahead and stitched back shut again. Here's after all the welding. See this piece is welded in. This section is fully welded in. I went in and knocked, uh, I put in more weld here because this was, I mean, ever so lightly. And there was no seam sealer and water could get through. So I've actually come through here and sealed up more holes and then flap dissed it down a little bit. <clears throat> all right, so what you're seeing here is uh, the all of the shiny paint has been sanded we've got a uh, poor 15 area right here where there was some bare metal and rust and you can see I've got the bed line taped off and this is post having an underbody coating put inside of the bed of the truck to try to quiet it down and give a nice durable quiet rubber finish and then right here also having done the inside of the truck here's a good shot of both of them together you can see that I've actually gone up in here and done this uh, we intended to put a headliner back in here and this actually hasn't happened yet and you see that tiger striping uh, wildly annoying to me just couldn't do anything about it because the can was upside down didn't want to play nice oh that's suspension well we're, that marks the beginning of much more mechanical things to come here uh, this actually has to do with the lift kit. Uh, we're about 18-20 minutes in now, so we'll go ahead and stop the series here so these videos aren't too long and uh, leave this as just the body section of the video. I really appreciate y'all sitting around and watching this one, and in the next video we'll go ahead and move on to some more of the suspension and mechanical stuff. Y'all have a good one. Uh, God bless. Thank y'all for being here. All of our social media is linked down below. I'm going to have the album down below. And uh, y'all catch us for the next one. Peace.